like in Malawi, we are faced with this kind of fraud at one time. It was called the cash gate, whereby people were defrauding the government coffers. And after this was discovered, the people who were arrested were mostly juniors, were mostly middle managers. Those coming from up the ladder were not arrested. Hello friends, welcome to another episode of my life experiences. Today's episode is just a continuation from last week, whereby we are discussing some of the challenges that you may encounter at the workplace. And these challenges were categorized into two, internal challenges and external challenges. The internal challenges were fully discussed last week. This week, we just want to focus and emphasize on the external challenges, challenges coming from without, challenges that you don't have much control over. <clears throat> now, these challenges have been um, broken down in four elements. Element number one, those that come from up, from the supervisors, then those come from down from the supervisees, those that come from uh, across from the peers, and those that are coming from uh, outside the circle from other stakeholders. Could be the board members, could be the suppliers, other customers, and any other stakeholder that you may be interfacing with at your workplace. <clears throat> Starting with the element number one, challenges from up from the supervisors. As an employee, you could be faced with a supervisor who is a micromanager, somebody who wants to get involved in your work to the smallest detail. They want to know how, they want to know why, they want to do, know where, they want to know when you are doing something to the smallest detail, not giving you your space. They just evade in your space as an employee, as a responsible officer, as a responsible staff member. They are not ready to give you any autonomy at all. Number two, they may skip you in decision making. Something that is an area that is under um, your work focus, you'd just hear that a decision has been made after the fact. You weren't involved, they just skip you, and you'll be wondering that I thought this area is uh, within my, my, my focus, within my authority. Why are they just making decisions without involving me? That's another challenge. And the third one is that of undermining your decisions. They could rope you in in the meetings just to be a representative, just to be a figurehead. When you make your decisions, when you give your advice, when you give your ideas, they don't take them up. They just undermine your, your, your decisions because you are just taken as a, as a figurehead, as a token in the meeting, just to show representation that you are represented without necessarily taking up your decisions. Another challenge from this element number one is that of pressure to break rules. <clears throat> they are pressuring you to break rules, giving you verbal instructions to break the rules and the regulations of the organization, to award a contract to a certain person who does not fit the criteria, or to, to, to transfer money to a certain account for a purpose which has not been uh, properly approved by the organization. Just trying to pressure you to defraud the organization by giving verbal uh, instructions. Like in Malawi, we are faced with this kind of fraud at one time. It was called the cash gate, whereby people were defrauding the government coffers. And after this was discovered, the people who were arrested were mostly juniors, were mostly middle managers. Those coming from up the ladder were not arrested because they were not directly involved with the fraud. They were just giving out verbal instructions. So these are the challenges that you may face coming from up. Challenges coming from down, from those that are reporting to you from your super, uh, supervisees. You may face the challenges of undermining your authority. You meet um, a certain supervisee Maybe because they have been at the organization for a certain amount of time, more than you, you found them there. When you come, they think maybe you are not the right person for the position, or maybe you've got the same qualifications, or maybe because of your age, they want to undermine your authority. They don't want to take what you are telling them. They don't want to take your instructions. They may also come to sabotage the work, <clears throat> working at a slow pace to the extent that by the end of the day, you miss your deadlines, you fail to deliver on your objectives, on your requirements as a team, as, a, as your department. 
So these are some of the challenges that may come from down uh, the ladder from supervisees. Then challenges that come from across from colleagues. The challenges of complete conflicting priorities. It could be that you are two department, different departments. Uh, the program department against the audit department or the admin department against the um, um, finance department, differing expectations, unspoken expectations, just because maybe of conflicting priorities. That may bring some challenges with, within the, uh, the two departments, within the two functions. So how may you, how may you approach this problem? Sit down across the functions, discuss your priorities, discuss how you it is affecting your work and the organizations and, and, and agree on how to prioritize as a team, as the whole entire organization, how do you prioritize your work, how do you assist each other, how do you collaborate in your work. The last challenge uh, element that you may face um, from external is that coming from stakeholders. And mostly, the challenges from stakeholders are those challenges that come to induce your decision making. By giving you monetary bribes, they may just issue some money, very big amounts of money, just to induce your decision making. They may give you uh, gifts, excessive gifts, very big gifts, just to induce your decision making. So that by the end of the day, you all award your contracts fraudulently. Somebody who doesn't meet the procurement criteria, you just award the contract to them because you've been induced by the financial gifts or the monetary bribes or whatever gift they may give you. Or sometimes um, you may maybe award a consultancy to a certain consultant who is not competent at their work just because they have induced you. Sometimes these people may also give false reports against you that maybe you haven't spoken properly, respectively, to, for, to them just because they are holding grudges in case you did not cave in to their demands, you did not cave in to their bribes, you did not cave in to what they want. If you are faced with a difficult supervisor, they are undermining you, they are being... Um, uh, they are being um, controlling and condescending against you, you have to approach your supervisor. I feel as if my ideas and my decision are not being taken up. I'm feeling as if you are micromanaging me. You're not giving me autonomy to make my decisions. Can you please give me my space? I want to make the necessary decisions. If it's still not happening, maybe they are pressuring you to do fraud. Take it, in, take it up. They may be um, asked for uh, written instructions, that they should give you written instructions, whether they are asking you to transfer some money, whether they are um, asking you to make improper procurements, they should put it in writing so that you should have some backup somewhere. You can even print it and store it somewhere where you know that this is the instruction that was given to me by the boss. You may seek redress, use the proper organization structure to bring forth your, your, your grievances, use the, that grievance procedure and to seek redress for whatever concerns you have with your supervisors. If the worst comes to the worst, you may just want to resign because sometimes it's not good to have a, a strained relationship with your supervisor. It's just good to just leave your job, move on, you'll get another blessing somewhere where you are going to work properly. If you are having challenges with a supervisee, approach them, tell them that what is your problem. Sometimes they could be having a personal challenges, maybe from coming from family or some other frustrations. Ask how you may help them. If after cautioning, after chatting with them, they are still not improving, then it's a performance matter. You have to bring it up during the uh, performance management meetings and put it up that this is um, non-performance. And if it happens over and over again, it's time for you to um, exercise your authority uh, as a as supervisor. Then those challenges come with um, the team, with the other, uh, other peers across. Collaborate well with other team members. Prior reprioritize if another department wants help, give them the help that they need at the appropriate time, discuss, look how you may um, reprioritize your work so that you are able to collaborate and synchronize all your work well. By the end of the day, the organization should benefit. 
if you are having challenges from other stakeholders from bribes refuse that no negotiation about it follow the instructions because if you break this you can be arrested, you'll be the one who is going to pay, you'll be the one who's going to lose the job, and it will be your children or your family members who is going to suffer. By the end of the day, whatever decision you make should be to the benefit of the organization. If the organization wins, you also win. If the organization succeeds, you also succeed. So just make sure that whatever stewardship whatever role the lord has placed you in in that organization you steward it well you'll be a good employee you'll be uh, a best performer you do to the best of your ability whether you are frustrated in some way and you feel like you're not being um, treated well work to the best of your ability if it's too much for you to bear it's time for you to move on thank you so much guys i i hope this has been helpful on how to, to handle external challenges at the workplace. Thank you so much. Stay blessed.